Hello semuanya, selamat siang. Welcome to other lesson in ICC 411. In this video, let's discover and explore another country in Asia. But before that, let me introduce myself and my groupmates. By the way, I am Christian Entranya, and together with my groupmates, Miss Laini Tabacon, Miss Nova Lintura, Mr. Lee Andro Bilepanya, and Mr. Imbo Yupai, and we are the group 10. To formally start our discussion today, first let's watch this video. In our tradition, when butterflies come, it is the sign that special ones will arrive. Hello once again everyone and now let's start our discussion and continue to explore another country which is the country Indonesia. Indonesia was formerly known as the Dutch East Indies or Netherlands East Indies. Although Indonesia did not become the country's official name until the time of independence, the name was used as early as 1884 by a German geographer. It is a throat to derive from the Greek Indus meaning India and Nessus meaning island. The capital city of Indonesia is Jakarta, which is located near the northwestern coast of Java. In the early 21st century, Indonesia was the most populous country in Southeast Asia, and it is the fourth most populous in the world. The currency of Indonesia is Indonesian Rupiah. The government type is Presidential Republic wherein the chief of state and the head of government is the president. Indonesia has a mixed economic system which includes a variety of private freedom combined with centralized economic planning and government regulation. The head of state or the head of the government of Indonesia is President Joko Widodo. The president heads the United Indonesia cabinet and is also head of the state, commander in chief, and responsible for domestic governance, policy making, and foreign affairs. The population of Indonesia in year 2022 it has an estimated population of 275 million and 400,000. Indonesia has a strategic location as tried major sea line and is an archipelago of 17,508 islands. And the official national language of Indonesia is Bahasa Indonesia. And there is a considerable diversity in the languages used in Indonesia, wherein their language is not less than 250. Now let's proceed to the significant cultural values and concepts of Indonesia. Core Concepts In Indonesia, face is the quality embedded in most Asian cultures that indicates a person's reputation, influence, dignity, and honor. By complimenting a person, like for example showing them a respect or doing something to increase their self-esteem, you give them a face. Similarly, people can lose face and save or build face. Therefore, individuals in Indonesia usually act deliberately and with restraint to protect their self-worth and peer perception. 
Next is harmony. In Indonesia, harmony is also a guiding philosophy. It affects many futures of society, particularly those of family and businesses. This means that working in harmony in Indonesia is viewed as the crucial element for productivity. Thus, the Indonesians have a predisposition to be indirect, gentle, and courteous, even if they disagree with what you are saying. Next is Indonesian society is hierarchical, organized predominantly by age. Indonesian one status, education, and perceived power will demand degrees of difference, but age usually becomes the overriding factor determining the level of respect, wherein elders in Indonesia are presumed to have the most wisdom since they have a lot of experiences in life, and therefore they are considered as the most deserving of authority. Greetings in Indonesia Greetings between two people of the same gender usually involve a handshake, like for example, men to men or women to women. However, devout Muslims may prefer not to touch people of the opposite gender, and I think it is a sign of respect. Also, after shaking hands, some Indonesians may place their hand on their heart or bow slightly. Women in Indonesia may choose to bow with their hands folded instead of shaking hands. This means that women in Indonesia has a choice as whether to bow with their hands folded or shaking hands. However, people in Indonesia may greet close relatives by shaking hands and kissing one another on both cheeks. Just like the same here in the Philippines, especially to our close uh, friends or family or relatives, we also do shaking hands and kissing one another on both cheeks. Younger people in Indonesia do not call those older than them by their first name. Just like here in the Philippines, we also have a sign for respect like for example, Lolo or Lola, Auntie or Uncle. But in Indonesia, they call them Bapak meaning Mr, Ibo meaning Mrs, or Kakak, all the elder. Lastly, Indonesians always greet people in order of their age, from eldest to youngest, in informal and family settings. Next is religion in Indonesia. At the time of the 2010 Indonesian census, according to the census, 87.2% of Indonesia was Muslim, 6.9% was Protestant Christian, 2.9% was Catholic Christian, and 1.7% was Hindu. A further, 0.7% was Buddhist, and 0.05% was Confucian. This means that Indonesia is a very spiritual country since Indonesians often ask people about their faith shortly after meeting them. Family in Indonesia In collectivist cultures such as Indonesia, families are perceived as having a collective face. In this sense, the act of an individual will impact the perception of one's entire family by others. Therefore, individuals should strive to give their family a good, a good name and honor to their parents. They are also expected to be loyal to their family before any other connections. This means that Indonesian culture stresses that people are socially responsible for their families and that children must look after their elders. Like for example, they may have to work away from home to provide financial assistance or give up their leisure time to raise their siblings. Next is relationships and marriage in Indonesia. Marriage indicates full adulthood in Indonesia, and people are often pressured and probed about their marital status. They are often asked, are you married yet? 
the response is either yes or not yet. Answers always allude to the notion that it will happen imminently or eventually. And people do not usually marry those of different ethnicities in Indonesia. However, it is becoming more common in the urban areas. Arranged marriage are still prevalent in rural Indonesia, with many women marrying by the time they are 20 years old. However, in accordance to Islamic values, an Indonesian man can have up to four wives if he can prove that he can provide for them equally. However, though it is allowed, polygamy is uncommon in Indonesia. Next is naming in Indonesia. Naming practices and traditions vary significantly across different regions, ethnicities, and linguistic groups in Indonesia. The following information provides a guideline to general conventions across the country, although it's most representative of Javanese Indonesian naming practices. Naming conventions. The Western concept of having a first name, middle name, and family name is not followed in Indonesia. Under Indonesian naming conventions, all components of a name are considered part of a single given name that is their unique personal identifier or personal name. Indonesian personal names are usually either one to three words long, although some may be longer. Like for example, Surpan, male, and Wulandari Hartunyu, female. Inherited names in Indonesia. While surnames or inherited names are not legally recognized in Indonesia, parents may choose to add a word component to their child's given name that reflects the person's lineage. This is usually the last word in a person's name that essentially operates like a surname. The practice is most common names that are two words long or more. Traditionally, noble families that are usually Javanese or Sundanese may pass on a name that indicates their family's lineage and prestige. Like for example, in the case of Prince Kanjeng Pageran Hario Noto Negoro. Noto Negoro is the family name indicating he is from a noble family. Also, some parents may choose to pass on their father's given name to the child, followed by the suffix, like for example, potra meaning prince and son, or putre meaning princess and daughter. Like for example, Superman's child may be called Hasan Sup Suparmut Putra. This patronymic name is still considered part of the person's full name rather than a surname. Names in Indonesia Just like the Philippines, Indonesian parents are generally free to choose whatever name they want for their child. This often leads to a lot of variation in name structure and formations. Names are often created by adding suffixes to existing names or words or by blending elements from different languages and ethnic or religious naming traditions such as Sanskrit, Javanese, Arabic, Chinese, and Dutch. Like for example, the name Anissa Ika Marta Widaswari has a word from Arabic, Sanskrit, Latin, and Javanese. It is a common for male names to end with suffix Udin or Udin to make them more recog recognized Arabic, like for example, Najimuddin, Hasanuddin, and etc. Most Indonesian names are also instilled with some significant meaning that symbolizes parents' aspirations and wishes for their child. Like for example, Slamit. In Japanese, it means safe and peaceful. Beja meaning ja in Japanese. In Javanese, meaning luck. Dates of significance in Indonesia. Here are some of the most important events or dates in Indonesia. The Kartini Day, which is celebrated on 21st of April. Indonesian National Day, which is celebrated in August 17. 
Youth Declaration Day, which is celebrated in October 28. Next is, and next is Hero Day, which is celebrated in 10th of November. Etiquette in Indonesia. Here are the some of the basic etiquette in Indonesia. Uh, first is, remove your shoes before you enter a carpeted room, place of worship, like for example church, or if you see that the host or the hostess has removed theirs too. Next is, tipping is appreciated, though a person of service is unlikely to ask for it. Next is, wait to be seated by a host. Next is, Chinese Indonesians often fight to pay when eating at a restaurant. Offering to pay for everyone is an exhibition of wealth. Last is, the Indonesian concept of time is much looser than that of Australians. So if it is not unusual for them to be one or two hours late to appointments. Eating etiquette in Indonesia. Do not begin to eat until indicated to do so. Food is usually served from larger dishes in the middle of the table. The host may serve the guests at the first serving, but generally guests serve them themselves from there on out. Some Indonesians may eat with their hands and keep both hands above the table while eating. Only pass food with your right hand. Empty, emptying your glass or finishing everything on your plate indicates that you want another refill or serving and will prompt the host to keep offering you more food. And last is, do not leave your seat or the table until everyone has finished their meal. Gift giving etiquette in Indonesia. Indonesians usually try to bring to bring gifts when visiting friends. These are small, usually don't have a significant monetary value. Flowers are given on special occasions, like for example marriage, marriage and funerals. Gifts should be given and accepted with both hands together or the right hand alone. Gifts are not open immediately upon receiving them. The appropriate gift may be may vary depending on an Indonesian's ethnicity and religion. Like for example, for Malays and Muslim Indonesians, gifts that have alcohol or pork in them should not be given. For strict Muslims, gifts of food must meet halal standards. Many Muslims accept foods without halal certification as long as it does not contain any pork products, including pork oil and fat. Now let's proceed to the structures and artifacts of Indonesia. First is the famous religious places in Indonesia. Number 1. Blandak Church. It is the oldest church in central Java. This Protestant church was built in year 1753 until now remains a landmark of Simarang's old time. The majestic brown dome is unmissable even amid other stunning colonial buildings in the Vinicity. In fact, the name Blandak means dome in the local dialect of Indonesia. This church houses European-style grandes with stunning portico, stained glass, and elegant all-white exterior. Number 2. Jakarta Church It was built with neo-gothic style typical to the time of construction in year 1901. This cathedral look looks more than the ones you will encounter in Europe than at the heart of the world's largest Muslim nation. The fucking mimics natural stone construction of this building with towering spires and interior adorned with statues and symbolic objects. This church also serves as a heritage site, a heritage site and destination as one of its three main spire houses, a museum showcasing relics of Catholic rituals. Next is Palasari Church. 
In a corner of Hindu, majority Bali, a Catholic village is alive and bustling with their own traditions and ceremonies. But even this locale isn't sterile from the Balinese Hindu influence, but is instead acculturated neatly into a fascinating community. Palasari Church is a product of this community of Balinese Catholic. The, archite the architecture is a mismatch between Gothic and traditional Balinese. The Istiklal Mosque. The mosque is located in the heart of the capital city of Jakarta, was asked to be the largest mosque in South Southeast Asia. The history hidden in it is also interesting to explore more deeply. The construction of this mosque was initiated by Indonesia's first president, I.R. Sokaryano. It was built from year 1951 and ending in year 1978. A span of 27 years to build a Muslim place of worship produces modern architect architectural splendor and geometric ornaments that we can enjoy today. The Maria Cave in Kederi this place of worship for Catholic Christians is located in the village of Pu Sarang, district of Semen Kederi, with an area of about 13 hectares. This cave is one of the, of the places of worship of Christians who have a magnificent and large crossing diorama. The land of the crossroad that is transversed when visiting the pilgrimage is not felt because of the shade of the trees and the nature of the environment around the cave of Maria Lourdes is able to protect the pilgrims from the heat of the sun. This cave that was built in year 1998 is a replica of Lourdes Cave in France on a small scale. Next is the Amitriya Monastery. It is a Buddhist temple located in Simara Asri housing complex. Medan is the largest monastery in Indonesia. It has a beautiful architecture, but still simple, which is the whole the hallmark of the of this Maitreya monastery. However, the construction itself took ten years. It is decorating koi ponds and bird parks make this temple so comfortable. Anyone who visit must be comfortable to linger and spend time there. Last is the Tana Lot. The temple which is located in Baraban village, Kederi district, Tabanan Regency can be reached in approximately one hour from Norai airport. The temple with beautiful sea panorama is built in two different places. One is located in a large rock and another is located on a cliff that juts into the sea. This place of worship of the sea god, god is one of the most famous objects when visiting Bali. When the sea ties, this temple will be seen in the middle of the sea. Underneath, there is a small cave in which there are several flat-tailed sea snakes with black and yellow. This temple is always crowded with local and international tourists. And if you are lucky, you can see Hindu worship rituals during Galungan and Kundingan holidays. This is the popular traditional houses in Indonesia. First one is Krung Bade or Romo Asi. From Nangro Asi, Jerusalem in Sumatera Island, this large house looks like a stage house with stairs in front of it. And Krumbade has a rectangular shape and made up of made up from west to east. So, kung matanaw na to, mapansin na to ang Krong is kanang lahi ragis yung traditional house no kayo kanang murag kanang siya kanang murag session hall ba na kwan na ground tas na po na kanang dosan danas na siya kung sa toa pa still in Sumatera Island Bulon House or Roma Bulon is very popular especially for Bataknes in North Sumatera well Bataknes have few tribes such as Batak Toba, Batak Karo, Batak Simalungon, Batak Pakpak, Batak Manday, 
Mandailing and Batak Angkula. So, kung mapansin na tumuro sa barko, kanang iyahang, kuwan ba, na siya sharp edge ang iyahang, kuwan, iyahang atop. So, mana siya ang Bulon Traditional House. So, mato na po sa Gadang Traditional House. In West Sumatira, there is Gadang Traditional House. This is the large house which have rooftop looks like a horn with a sharp tip. The rooftop made up of fibers, kung ito na to, fibers na siya, uh, kanang murag hait, iyang, iyang atok. There are many functions of gadang house, such as place for living, place for taking care of people illness, with illness, and place to celebrate ceremony. So, ang gadang lang, the, ang gadang uh, house, traditional house, dako kayo gamit no, sa mga Indonesian people, kay, di, dili lang siya pang, kwan, dili lang siya pang, pang kang pangpuyo sa pamilya kung dili uh, daghan kayo gamit siya no pwede siya uh, place to celebrate ceremony pwede siya pang wedding uh, pwede siya kanang reception sa wedding or kanang hanimunan or kanang arrest house or kanang namoy kung namoy mga appear sa inyong pamilya or namoy mga uh, activities sa inyong pamilya pwede siya sa gadang house which is makita sa Indonesia Joglo House is a traditional house from Central Java. For specifically, Joglo House can find easily in Yug Yugyai Karta. Inside the house, inside the house, there are several several rooms for living. In front of the house, there is a large yard as a living room. Well, it is it is not the main living room because the main belong is of its one house ko so yan lang siya no simple lang ang uh, joglo traditional house but do traditional house the house is not as large as the previous house but it's quite unique the house find easily in bantin basically this find easy this small house looks like a stage which made up of fiber so the whole material to build the house made up of bamboo so Ang banduin nga uh, traditional house is kanang perherga pun sa mga Pinoy. Makita na to sa mga tribe gani kanang mga native people sa Pinoy, so, especially sa mga bukid-bukid kanang natural lang siya or kanang murag payag lang siya kung sa ato uh, kung sa Pinoy pa. So mato na puta sa visual arts in Indonesia. So carving and painting are among the best known of Indonesia's visual art traditions. Bali long ha has been of special special interest culturally because it has maintained Hindu tradition for centuries within a predominantly Muslim environment. Carvings are visible at nearly every turn. Images depicting natural and supernatural entities from Hindu and indigenous traditional traditions adorn temple entrances, animate mass dance and puppet performances overlook the grounds of offices and homes and populate the shelves and walls of galleries in the towns and cities so muna siya ang visual arts in Indonesia so very popular do sila ang carving and painting kay mo muna ilang kuan special specialty or mo muna ilang kuan kanang diya sila nakilala ang Indonesia Nawang Baro, North Kalimantan, Indonesia. Carving at the head of a column in the community hall of Nawang Baro, a Kenya village in North Kalimantan, Indonesia. So, mana siya ang nong sa Naw Nawang Baro. So, Japanese leather shadow puppets. Japanese leather shadow puppets wayang kulit against an illuminated screen. So, developed before the 10th century, the form had origins in the Talu, Talubu Malata, the leather puppets of southern India, probably spread to Java with the spread of Hindu Hinduism. The prototype of the Wayang figures is the Wayang Kulit or shadow puppet made up of perforated elaborate painted later so mauna Japanese batik pattern or batik parang has six types of patterns namely parang rusak parang barong parang kusumo parang kisil parang islubog and parang kulit klitik ikat cloth 
ikat cloth from Eastern Sumba East Nusa Tenggara Indon. Ikat fabric is a dyeing technique used to create a distinct style of textile pattern formed by finding individual yarns or binding individual yarns or bundles of yarns with a tight wrapping applied in the desired pattern. So, muna siya ang ikat cloth. And now, let's discover the sites and human habitats of Indonesia. Archaeological Sites in Indonesia Many of the world's most archaeological sites have been found in Indonesia, like Java Man, Flores or Habit Man, Borobudur, Prambanan, and many other discoveries have drawn explorers from near and far. Much more ancient history is unfolding across Indonesia today. Gunung Padang is one of the archaeological sites in Indonesia. It is a megalithic site in Karyamokta village in West Java. It's about 50 kilometers southwest of the city of Zianjur. Some are calling it the largest megalithic site in all of Southeast Asia. The site in West Java covers a hill in a series of terraces bordered by retaining walls of stones that are rich by about 400 andesite steps. It is covered with massive rectangular stones. Next is the Garut Pyramid. The Garut Pyramid is larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza and could be far older. By using geoelectric instruments, surveyors are measuring the resistance of the geological layers while seeking additional funding to begin excavations. An initial survey determined that the structure is unlikely to be of natural formation. Next is the Bada Valley. Sulawesi features several megaliths throughout a remote area in the Poso Regency on the island of Sulawesi. It is part of Lower Lindo National Park. Bada Valley features dozens of ancient megaliths and several large stone cauldrons. The objects remain a mystery. The carved megaliths are between 1,000 to 5,000 years old. They scattered across the valley. When asked about the origin of these statues, locals explain that they always been here. Some believe they were used in ancestral worship or may have had something to do with human sacrifice. Others believe that these statues ward off evil spirits. One legend tells that they are criminals which were turned to stones, and there is even a superstitious that the statues can disappear or move from place to place. Some have been reported found in slightly different locations. These statues are made from a type of stones not found anywhere near the area. Are you looking for fresh tourist spots to visit? How about taking an eco-friendly trip? Ecotourism started gaining popularity about a decade ago and environmental-friendly destination saw a surge in interest from travelers to Indonesia. And now, it's time to discover the ecotourism destination in Indonesia. Mount Liuser National Park, named after the lovely Mount Liuser in North Sumatra. This large park is home to thousands of unique species of wildlife, including endangered tigers and orangutans. The diversity in the soil and the altitude of this North Sumatran treasury results in an enormous variety of flora. The fact that 45% of all known plant species in the whole Indo-Malayan region can be found in this place makes it so unique. Unfortunately, in 2011, UNESCO included 7,927 kilometers of beautiful land on the list of world heritage in danger, pushing the community to change its ways. Now, tourists can enjoy their visit and at the same time, animals, wildlife, and community around the area can be protected. The priority is to give back to the society by employing local communities and keeping the trips waste-free, leaving only footprints on this precious soil. Observe the stunning diversity as you jungle trick with experienced local guides witness a morph. 
Amorphophallus titanium, the biggest flower in the world, and watch the endangered orangutans venture deep into the jungle. Next is the Baluran National Park. Covering an area of about 250 kilometers, the Baluran National Park in East Hava allows you to encounter the savanna wildlife. The last vegetation here includes peca nut trees, maha, and java tamarind trees. Tourists who love the woodland grassland landscape can gaze upon the 144 species of birds, including black kites or hirundo rustica and enjoy binocular views of the 26 mammal species that these habitats offers in addition to the wildlife panorama of the savanna tourists can enjoy the bama beach which lies east of the area these enchanting locations offer water activities like snorkeling and diving to explore the abundance of nature Balura National Park is perfect ecotourism destination for those who want to experience savannas and water ventures. Next is the West Bali National Park. This prosperous destination is located in Bali, a place loved by tourists both local and foreign. Serving as the island's main wildlife conservation area, West Valley National Park's greenery stretches across a staggering 19,000 hectares of land. With the coarse savannas, dense tropical rainforest, mangrove swamps, and coral reefs, tourists can witness Mother Nature at its finest here. This ecotourism spot is home to more than 300 fauna species, especially the endangered Bali starting, and serves as protective reserves. <laughs> Protective reserve allowing access to only those have permission. But no need to worry. West Bali National Park is always open for eco tours. With assistance of tourist guide, tourists can indulge in sightseeing on outriggers, diving, trekking, and bird watching, some of the most popular activities here. Next is the Komodo National Park, featured in the list of National Geographic World's Top 10 Destinations in 2017. Komodo National Park serves as the perfect retreat for peace and tranquility. This park is located in the East Nusa Tenggara province and is the best place to spot the slithering four-legged reptile, the Komodo dragon. Local and foreign tourists can also discover other species of wildlife in this area, including the orange-footed scrub fowl, Timor dicer, and the endemic Rinka rat. And then the Bonakin National Park. Unlike the other locations mentioned above, the Bonakin National Park serves as Tropical Marine Park, established in 1991. This park has 89,065 hectares of surface area, 97% of which is warm tropical seawater and only 3% of it is land. This park is located in Manado, North Sula Sulawesi, is well known for its unique bathymetry, an eye-catching attraction for scuba divers and those who want to experience the park's marine life. Ecotourism will contribute to assist the local community and earnings will be spent on the conservation programs of the park. And now, the oral or folk heritage of Indonesia. Folklore of Indonesia is known in Indonesian as dongeng or tale, sereta rakyat or people's story, or folklore, refer to any folklore found in Indonesia. Its origins are probably an oral culture with a range of stories of heroes associated with wayang and other forms of theater transmitted outside of a written culture. Folklore in Indonesia are closely connected with mythology. So these are um, some examples no, of folklore 
of Indonesia. So, the legend of Tubalik, Lutong Kasarong, Lutong Kasarong is a Sundanese folklore tale from West Java, Indonesia, set in the Pasir Batang Kingdom. So it tells the tale of a magical lutong type lutong, a type of black monkey who helped a beautiful princess for Basari Huang Huangi when her older sister attempted to rob her of her status as crown princess. Next is the legend of Loro Jonggrang and the Golden Cucumber or Timon Mas or Timon Imas or in English the Golden Cucumber is a Japanese folktale telling the story of a brave girl that tries to escape and survive from an evil green giant that tried to catch and eat her. Hi everyone, I am Noveline M. Tura. Your reporter for this topic, Traditional Performing Arts in Indonesia. Andel 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 is a traditional attraction came from Bitawi, the origin ethnic of Jakarta, the capital city of Indonesia. Andel Andel is a big costume with man inside in it. Andel Andel is usually performed in traditional festival. The purpose of Andel Andel is to remind people with their ancestors and their own culture. Riog Riog is a traditional attraction come from Ponorogo, East Hava. Riog has been the traditional landmark of Ponorogo. Riog is a traditional attraction which is popular with mystic atmosphere in it. Riog is a man's dance using a huge mask symbolizing evil face. Casada Kasada is a traditional ceremony attraction which is held in East Hava. This traditional attraction is held by the Tinger ethnic in Brumo Mountains. This ceremony purpose is to raise the shaman of certain village in Tinger. This is an offering attraction to the Brumo Mountain by the Tinger ethnic to introduce the new shaman. Karapan Sapi Karapan sapi or cow's race in English is another traditional attraction in Indonesia. These traditional attractions come from Madori East Hava. This attraction attracts many audiences to view the fastest cow ridden by the cow rider. Divus Divus is another mystic attraction in Indonesia. This attraction originally comes from Banten West Java. This traditional attraction is kind of sadistic attraction because this performance performed the endurance of performer by using knife, fire, and other dangerous objects. Next topic is traditional games in Indonesia. Bentengan Bentengan is usually played by the kids during the break time at school. Bentengan is a game where the players have to be calculated and pass. Gubak Sudor Hadang Atayo Galaxin The name of this traditional game depends on where you are from. But, the gameplay and rules remain the same. Usually, the game is played on a badminton court or by drawing a 9 by 4 meters court and divide the court into 6 parts. Kong Klak or Dakun Kong Klak is commonly played by girls and almost every region plays this game. To play the game, you will need a special board with 16 holes and 98 pieces of grain or clamshells. Good morning, my name is Andrew Evolapena. Let's continue to the Traveling Indonesia. And these are the written heritage of Indonesian. During a time, Indonesia was a Dutch colony. The Latin alphabet was introduced to write Indonesian and a number of Dutch spellings were used. This alphabet was called Ijan Lama, or it means old script in Indonesian. In 1947, the spelling of OE was changed to U. Then in 1972, a set of official changes to the Indonesian spelling systems were introduced by former president Suharto. The major changes included changing to CH to KJ, H, DJ to J, J to Y, NJ to NY, SJ to SY, and TJ to C. In Muslim communities in Indonesia, the Jawi alphabet 
a version of Arabic alphabet is sometimes used to write Indonesian. And these are the alphabet Bahasa Indonesia in the Indonesia. So A, A is A, B is B, C is C, D is D, and so on. These are the alphabets of Indonesian from A to G were added um, E. And these are the pronunciation of Kara, or it means the Indonesian vowels. So, A, 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 U, U in the Philippines where Indonesian is A, is E, and A, O, and U, and A, I, A, A, U, E, and O. Um, let's note that there are four diagrams. The NJ is Ming Eng, NY is Nye, TH is Ka, and SY is Sha. The final two only appear in words of Arabic origin. The vowels E and O are pronounced E and O in close final syllables. A and A U are pronounced A U. And final position and separated vowels A I and A U elsewhere. The letter Q, V, X, and Z are used in loan words from Europe, Europe and India. To continue, let's talk about the popular cultural heritage of Indonesia. The first one is the Wayang Pape Theater 2008. Those who have wondered around the island of Java might find themselves familiar with Wayang Puppet Theater. It is a form of traditional storytelling using the shadow thrown by the puppets manipulated by sticks against the translucent screen lit from behind. The performance is conducted by a master of puppet who also acts as a narrator and a voice actor of puppet figures accompanied by gameland music played in the background. Well, in 2008 in general, Wayang Puppet Theater tells stories from the Mahabharata and Ramayana epics, but are not limited to them. The master of puppet can also play modified scripts known as Karangan. If you are visiting Indonesia, you can find Wayang Puppet Theater. Shows in Sunobudoyo Museum of Wayang Jogja, Night Carnival and Special Region of Yogyakarta. The second one is the kris. Kris is a sharp blade type, traditional weapon originating from the island of Java which has a variety of cultural functions known in the western and central regions of Indonesia. The shape is identical and easily distinguished from the other sharp weapons because it is not symmetrical, symmetrical in the base and has winding edges. Well, Chris in the past served as a weapon in a duel or a battle, as well as com complementary object. Well, in today's use, Chris is being used more an accessory objects or age men, and a traditional dress or simply just being a collector's product. The use of Chris spread in the community occupants that has not, I, I mean, does not, I, that, have been affected by Mapahapit ear such as Bali, Java, Nusa Tenggara, Sumatra, Sumatra, Kalimtanan, Sulawesi, and Malay Peninsula. It is acknowledged and listened as one of the masterpieces of intangible cultural heritage of UNESCO. The, second, the third one is the batik. In general, batik is a fabric painted in a night candle um, liquid using a tool called canting resulting in a high volume executized traditions garment product the word batik itself is presumably derived from the word ambatik in javanese which translates into a cloth with the little dots saint onesco acknowledged batik as one of the masterpieces of intangible cultural heritage by onesco in 2009 batik is one is more internationally known as the ideal representation of Indonesian um, traditional clothing.
it is also that It is also that there are approximately thousands of different batik designs in Indonesia. Some designs has been culturally associated with traditional festival and specific religion ceremonies. In the past, locals believe that certain cloths has magical powers to ward off backlack, while other pieces could also bring good luck. The fourth one is the educational training batik in 2009. This this is the example of painting batik using canting. Not only um, listening the product, UNESCO also has enlisted the education and training in batik in Pikalongan as intangible cultural heritage. It is was selected in 2009 on the registered of good safeguarding practices. The program was initiated by Batik Museum in 2005 in, in collaboration with the educational authorities of the city, which the main object of increasing the awareness and appreciation of cultural heritage of Indonesian's Batik, including the, its history, cultural values, and traditional skills among the Indonesian youth. The fifth one is the Angklong. Well, Angklong origi originated in 2010. It is a traditional mu uh, musical instrument that originated in the land of Sunda or West Java region. This traditional musical instrument is made of bamboo and it's played by shaking to produce a tone. Therefore, to create a harmonious melodies, Angklong should be played collectively uh, in a assemble. Well, if you are interested in seeing first-hand an Angklong music performance, you can visit Saung Angklong Onju in Banjong, West Java. It was established in 1990, 1966 by Onju Ngalenga with the objective of making Angklong an attractive harmonious music arts performance. And the sixth one is the Saman Dance. In 2011, salmon dance is one of the traditional dances of Ik, which originated from the Gayo. Play 2 was, fa uh, was developed by Sheikh Muhammad uh, Saman in the 17th century. It is considered a fairly unique traditional dance because it is doesn't only any musical instrument to lead the re um, re um, rhythm. Rather, the dancers set, uh, sit and move only with their head, torso, and arms while, while the beat is formed using hand clapping and shoulder clapping. The lyric song in Saman dance um, uses Arabic and Gaya language. In the past, Saman dance was only performed to celebrate important events in the customs and the people of a... This dance also performed the celebrate birthdays of the Prophet Muhammad. The genres of Balinese tradition dances in 2015. Being a virtual part of Balinese culture, Balinese traditional dance is often associated with religious ceremony. However, since the 1950s with the rapid development of tourism, Several dances has been displayed, displayed on activities outside of religious events with several modifications. There are three genres of Balinese traditional dances which has been recognized as parts of intangible cultural heritage from Indonesia by UNESCO. Those three genres are sacred wali semi circuit is bebali and the which is meant by enjoyment by communities and large bebali bebalihan wali and bebali dances can only be performed at a certain places and time wali dances are usually presented in the inner yard of a temple and bebali dances is med yard Meanwhile, the Bebali Bebelihan dances can be performed off the, on the outside yard in the entertainment, entertainment related events.
The eighth one is the Noken. Noken is a traditional bag originated from Papopwa that is broke using a head of made of fiber bark similar to bags in general. This bag is used to carry daily necessities. Papuans also use it use it to bring agricultural products such as vegetables and also to carry items to the market. No can traditional bags be um, bring a symbol of good life, peace, and fertility for the people in Papua, especially in the um, mountainous region of Central Papua, such as the Me, Ikari, the Mal Yali, Dani, Lani, and Bauzi tribes. What's interesting about the Noken traditional bag is only Papuans are allowed to make Noken. Um, Penesi in 2017. Penesi, or sometimes called Penesi, is a traditional sailing vessel originated from the seafaring tradition of Bugis ethnic group of southern, I, I mean, South Sulawesi. A Penesi ship has been to the so eight screens of the two poles has a length of around 50 to 70 feet with water lines around 34 to 43 feet well, when load is light. According to La Gallego, Gallego, the ancient manuscripts of the Bugis, Penesi ships has been around since in the 14th century. The ship is usually built using traditional equipment following exact prescribed tradition techniques that have been passed down from generation to generation. Its construction does not only involve strength and techniques, but also, as the local believe, supernatural powers in which every stage requires strict adherence to certain rituals and ceremonies. Pencock Silet 2019 Pencock Silet is a form of traditional martial art which originated in the Malay region part of Indonesia and spread across the archipelago. Aside from being a self-defense sport, traditions of Pencock Silat also encompass mental, spiritual, and artistic aspects. The movement of Pencock Silat are heavily influenced by many elements of art which encourage harmonious body movements. According to my research, the, pe the term Pencock Silat mostly known in Java. While Silat is familiar in West Sumatra, describing a group of martial arts with strong likeness to each other. Furthermore, each region has its own move, style, accompaniments, music, and supporting equipment including costumes, musical instruments, and traditional weapons. The techniques of Pencock Silat mainly consists of maintaining a relationship with God, human beings, and nature. The combat is trained in various techniques to encounter attacks or any dangerous situations based on soul principles to protect themselves and others. The 11th one is the Pantan in 2020. Pantan is kind of traditional poetry from Indonesia that is bound by rhyme structure in a general pantan consists of four lines and the writing is symbolized by the letter a b a b the first two lines are called sampiran or the opening while the last two lines are called isi dan tu juan or content and purpose pantan often used to express intricate ideas emotions or sometimes to just have fun interactions with other people it is known as the most whispered oral form of maritime Southern, Southeast Asia and has been used in many parts of the region for at least 500 years. And the last one is the game one. If you've ever visited the island of Java and Bali, most likely you've heard Gameland played in some tourist attractions, restaurants, or even airports. Airports, I mean. Gameland is a tradition assembled music consisting predominantly of persuasive 
ornate instruments made of hand forged menthol. The origin var uh, varies uh, from the Javanese, Sundanese, to Balinese. The vital instrument in gamelan assemble are xylophones, gongs, gong chimps, drums, cymbals, strings, instruments, and bumble flutes. These are precise rules and techniques that must be followed when playing gamelan assembles instruments. Involved during tuning, layout, rhythmic, and metric patterns and perform. That is why the music sounds traditionally distinctive and memorable to those who have listened to it. Men and women and children of all ages can participate in the playing gimlan assembles instruments. The music is typically performed in religious rituals, ceremonies, traditional theater, festivals and concerts, and also tourist attractions in Indonesia. And lastly, there are so many things in Indonesia that you can learn and enjoy at cultural entertainment and also life philosophy as well. We hope that this um, this report can motivate you to wait patiently for a future holiday to Indonesia and help you to prepare for your journey. Meanwhile, stay and safe. Don't forget to practice healthy habits when the time is right. We will welcome you back for her open arms. Thank you once again. This is a group 10 and this is the report about Indonesia.